Hey guys, in this video, I'll be going through my exact product research strategy, what I look for in a product, what types of products I look for, and how I find these products that enable me to hit over $16,000 in one day. All right guys, here we are on the dashboard. You can see I did 16 and a half thousand in one day over here. Here are the sales by the hour. Uh, we have a 2% conversion rate. We had about a 20% profit margin. It was just over that. So the net profit was about 33, $3,400. I'm just waiting for this thing to load up again because this computer is very slow. But yeah, you can see I'm just breaking it down by the hour over here. These numbers are real and in this video, I'll be showing you how I was able to hit these numbers. So before doing product research, you should know what to look for in a product. And here's the criteria I used to find my winning products. So number one, you want it to be eye-catching. So, you know, people are scrolling, you need this image to pop out, whether it's, you know, a unique product or the colors pop in the image, or it's just a great image of the product. So you definitely want them to scroll on Instagram and then, or on Facebook, and just immediately stop at your ad. So the second thing is instant recognition. So once they see your ad, they need to know exactly what that product is without second guessing, and it needs to happen in a matter of half a second. The next thing would be perceived value. So let's say you're selling, you know, kitchen utensils, right? Can you sell this product for two or, you know, let's say $300? It's gonna be a tough sell, honestly. Can you sell kitchen utensils for $50? Yeah, you can. And if you ever do get stuck on how to price your products, you can always go on Google and type in, you know, for example, you would here you would type in kitchen utensils and you'll see what kitchen utensils go for on average. So that should kind of give you a ballpark of how you can price your products. So number four would be having enough margin, meaning you need a high enough margin to make money. So let's say you're selling a $10 item and you're selling it for $20, but ad spend is generally $15. You would be losing $5 per sale. Now let's say you're selling a $10 item, but you're selling it for $50. Ad spend is still $15. So you're making $25 per sale. And that's why pricing is so important. So number five would be product seasonality. So either the product is evergreen, where it can be sold all year round, or it's in the right season. So you, know, you don't wanna be selling jackets in the summer and swimming trunks in the winter. If you're ever confused about the item and you don't know if it's in the right season, you can go on Google Trends. So for example, a gardening tool. You can go on Google Trends, you can type in gardening and see when there's the slow time and when the peak time is so you can maximize your profits. So now we need to know what types of products we look for. Uh, I pretty much look at anything. I don't stop at any niche. I don't stop at any product unless one, it's a liability product and two, it's a patented or trademarked product. So for liability products, you basically just don't want any lawsuits. Well, for either scenario, you don't want any lawsuits. An example of a liability product would be a candle holder. Let's say the candle gets knocked down, the house goes on fire, you're to blame. You can get a lawsuit and it has happened before. Same thing with patented and, and trademarked products. You start selling those things and the owner of the original product will reach out to you. Either you get a cease and desist letter or you just get a lawsuit. And now I want to talk about how and where I find these products that enable me to hit over $16,000 in one day. And I've done way more than that. 16 is not the cap. I'm just using it for this example. Now let's talk about the actual process of finding these products. So here we are on AliExpress. You could just type in AliExpress.com and you'll get to this page. So there are three ways you can do some product research here. So on the left, you'll see categories you can dive into these individually and see if anything pops up. You can also type something in in the search bar where it says iPhone case. You could just type in what you're looking for, for example, a gardening tool or home decor or whatever it is. And the third, you can just scroll right on the homepage and when you find products, you click on them. The biggest issue that I see when people are doing product research is that they just keep scrolling and they don't click on anything. So you're essentially just waiting for this perfect product to just 
magically appear, which, you know, can happen, but you're going to be scrolling for a very long time. Think of your mouse as being your shovel. So the more times you click on your mouse, the more you're digging into AliExpress. If you just keep scrolling and scrolling, you're just observing what's on the surface and you're not going any deeper. And this is why people are only able to add one or two products in three hours of doing product research. So as you're scrolling on AliExpress, click on products that are decent or just in different categories, even if they're not perfect, even if they're not products that you want to actually test on Facebook or put them on your store. Your objective here is to go down these rabbit holes and go into different categories and see what AliExpress can show you. We have a wallet over here as an example. Let's say we click on this wallet, right? We can scroll all the way down and see that AliExpress is now recommending a ton of different wallets. And what we want to do is click on a bunch of these that we also think are decent or mediocre or whatever it is. So for example, we open up this wallet now. Also nice image. And we just keep going and keep going down, down this rabbit hole until we find something that's, that's really good or that fits our criteria. So over here we see sunglasses. Let's say we click on the sunglasses. We start scrolling down and this is going to be the same exact scenario. You start scrolling through and you'll see random products. It's not also, it's not just sunglasses. You know, here you have necklaces, you have some pouches, shirts. So you're going to come across a lot of different types of products just by clicking on them. Now, when you come across products that fit the criteria we spoke about earlier, you just want to take the link over here and have a product research sheet just created super simple. Uh, so you just put in the link, type in sunglasses and this column I have for when I come back to the sheet. So you don't want to interrupt your product research just by, you know, sitting here and thinking, oh, is this cost right? Is this the best image? I'm not sure. No one cares. You'll come back to that later. What you want to do is work with speed here and use your time wisely. So the more products you can find, the better it is for you. If you keep interrupting your flow, you're going to get three, four products again in one hour instead of 10, 15, because you keep interrupting. All right, so let's assume you are now done with your product research. Here you have six products that you want to review. You kind of went back to them and you want to see if things still make sense, if you still want to test them. So let's start with kitchen utensils. Number one, this is a product that I absolutely would test. I think the image is fantastic. The colors pop. It's a 12 piece set for $9. You can easily sell this for $60. It's a 12 piece utensil set. Set. If you don't believe me, you can go on Google and type in 12 piece utensil set. You'll see what they go for. Next, we have an iPhone case. This is also something that I would test at this price point. So the image looks great. Uh, it looks like a high quality image, high quality product. The price point is showing $4.67. There's no shipping for $5. You can sell this for $30 or $40. So I would say yes to both. I'll put yes and yes. Then we have this uh, phone case. This is something I would never test. I think the image looks horrible. It's a very low quality image. It looks like someone just laid it out right on their table and took a picture. So I would pass on this. I would say no. Next, we have some USB item. Why I would never test something like this. When you first see it, you have absolutely no idea what it is. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. These people that you're targeting, they want to know, they need to see right away what the product is and understand what it is. They can't be guessing there. Otherwise, they won't click on it. So I'm going to say no for this as well. Next, we have a headlamp. Same exact scenario here. While this could be a good item to sell, you'd probably need a video to show how the lights go and this and that. We don't even waste time with that. If the image isn't right, we don't test it. This is something that I would pass on. Again, no one would know what this is just by looking at it if it's on their feed. Last product, let's say the shoes. Price point, let's say is $8.99 for shipping. Yeah, it's $8.99 plus another two. Let's say $11, $12, right around there. Price point I think is incredible. You can easily sell these for $40, 
50, 60 dollars. I would say the sweet spot for shoes, probably around the 40 to 60 mark, 50 dollars would be an awesome selling price here. So now we're back at our sheet. We want to remove these three because we no longer want to be testing them. And now these are the three items we would put directly onto our store. We would use those images on the product pages and for the ads. So in conclusion, when you're doing your product research, be sure to keep clicking on products instead of scrolling. And that's a guaranteed way to find winning products. I have another video on my YouTube channel where I go into 10 different categories and 10 different products. In that video, I'm just basically showing you that there are no limits here. If you guys are interested in learning more, my business partner, John and I, we have a Discord called The Yard. And in there, we have a product review channel where people post their products in there, their product links daily, and the community gives their feedback. Essentially, you'll have a Rolodex of products that you know you should be testing or should not be testing. As always, I hope this information was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe to this channel. It gives me more reason to provide content for you guys and keep posting. I'll see you in the next one.